So here we have a Dynaco Stereo 70. Typical hi-fi you would buy on eBay. Great sounding unit. People bring me a lot of these. They're well worth restoring. I do quite a few. This obviously was a kit. You can tell that somebody put this together. Um, not so great, but the solder joints are good. Just a little bit of burning. We're gonna have to replace all these electrolytic capacitors with modern types, which are much higher quality. Not particularly expensive, but much better. Anything past its service life. All the electrolytics, this germanium diode has to go. There's a couple filter caps with a bias supply. Those have to go. And we'll make sure that everything's performing right. These 1% resistors, which to measure the bias, we have to make sure they haven't drifted. They need to be a tight tolerance. See, it says 1% on there. Um, yeah, that's it. Looks like this switch has been bashed up. So that's gonna need to be replaced. Yeah, ground the power cable. This does not conform to current safety standards. You do not want this, trust me. This is not grounded and possibility of electric shock is real. So this is something we do first before we even work on the unit. Let's put a grounded cable on it. I like to use a medical grade cable. I have a bunch there. I buy them by the hundred count. Replace them so often. So yeah, typical job. Hour and a half of labor and some parts and this thing will be sounding better than new. Okay, I'll give you a little quick tour of some of the gear hanging around in my shop here. Right here we have a tube curve tracer which hooks up to this computer. Uh, here are the power supplies for it so I can do tube testing that's very precise. This computer is hooked up to this bed laser here and this I can use as a laser engraver. Um, it's a cool Chinese made uh, little laser engraver. Of course the drill press which every metal shop has to have. This is a tube tester. Um, don't get me wrong, these things are barely useful except to test for shorts, even though people do trust the readings. They're eh. A couple of guitars, of course, because I need test instruments to test amplifiers. Uh, this is my building bench where I'm building my bass preamps right now. I have to turn out about a dozen of these for guys at the bottom. This is the bass preamp that I put on the internet some time ago. And uh, this is kind of typical design for my builds. I like to make things designy looking. You can see there's some in pieces and all the parts here um, being put together. And this here is a beautiful magnetone amplifier, famous for pitch bending tremolo. This is one of the greatest sounding guitar amplifiers ever. Beautiful vintage amp right now, it's waiting on parts. Here we got a couple of 300B hi-fis that I just did an upgrade on with some fancy transformers and a little bit of circuit magic, oscilloscopes, um, test gear of various types, of course a couple of decent speakers to check things out on. Here we have a stock of tubes, some more test gear, anything small, I keep an ear tachometer for turntables. Um, of course, some records for testing phono stages. Uh, this is all tube stock. Um, right here we got uh, a taser, just in case. Uh, let's see what else. More tubes, bunch of tools, meters, resistors, capacitors, solid state stuff, all organized, reverb tanks, and of course, a small sampling of books that I've collected over the years. Here's one that any tube lover will recognize. The Venerable Radiotron Designer's Handbook, 4th edition. Hard to find. Well, of course, you could find it on PDF on the internet, but that's no fun. Uh, what else? Moving outward. Got more gear waiting to be repaired. So let's see. Here we got all manner of boat anchor stuff, which I'm turning into guitar amps or rebuilding as hi-fis for people. Here's a couple of Alembic bass preamps, Dynaco Stereo 70, which I'm sure every hi-fi maven will recognize, along with the matching preamp, goes with it. Uh, here's a Hovland hi-fi, beautiful. Inside this box, we have a Master Sound 845, which has been repaired. It's on its way to being shipped out. This is a line stage that I'm building for a client. Uh, no holds barred insanity, digital readouts, 
crazy motorized pots, beautiful beer can capacitors. You can hear the juice shaking inside. Um, here we have a Scott, which I'm gonna repair for somebody. Great sounding unit. Oh, and look here, is Janet Dagdigan. Who is that? Okay, I'm repairing this for someone named Jana, who I think works for a magazine. Um, right here, we have somebody's science project. It's a very modified Bogan. In fact, it was gut renovated to something else, but yeah, I got it figured out and that's all fixed, waiting to be picked up. And of course, these are all vintage guitar amps. Some of them are current manufacturer, like this little guy from Fender this Fender stuff, but a lot of it is the tools of the ancient ones, rock and roll machines. Box AC30, here's a beautiful one out of Canada, Fender Tweed, Sovtech, Marshall, Top Hat. Oh, here's something, Park. You don't see these every day. This is a Park amplifier, dead mint for a um, experimental musician I know. Great, great player. Some tape echoes more Vox, and of course my toolbox. Where would I be without my toolbox? And last but not least, in the back corner, four fish tanks full of tubes, which represents about three years worth of pulls and used to be a wall in my loft in Los Angeles back when I had big space. That I just keep around for fun. So you were curious about this tattoo that I have that my friend Dano did. He used to have a shop here on the Lower East Side. It's a Virgin of Guadalupe inside a 300B. I think I got that in about 1980. Uh, just for the fun of it, he did a little custom design for me. Of course, I have a bunch of tattoos, obviously. But not all of them tube-themed. And that's it.